Hey guys, it's Laura Waters Brown here. I am so stoked to be here with you on Sports Biz Camp Speaker Series. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Sports Biz Camp Speaker Series. This is Patrick Stack, co founder of Sports Biz Camps. Really excited to welcome Laura Waters Brown uh, to the series. Uh, before we hear from Laura, hi, Laura. Before we hear from Laura and let her speak, I wanted to make sure that we recognize. Our sponsor, Ortho Carolina, um, their continued investment in helping kids understand potential career paths in the sports industry and, and the importance of education is uh, is truly invaluable. So thank you for your support. And that's the reason that we have uh, amazing opportunities to talk to amazing people like Laura Waters Brown today, free of charge. So thank you very much, Ortho Carolina. Thanks. Let's talk Laura Waters Brown. Hello, Laura. How are you doing? Hey, doing great, Pat. How are you? Doing well, doing well. Um, excited to have you on the speaker series here. Um, Thanks for having me. It's your it's your maiden voyage. Hopefully not going to be the last. So we've got kind of a game plan here. The first step in that game plan is we need to know about Laura Waters Brown. Give us the the real high level. I know that you're a complicated individual like all of us. Yes. But but at a minimum, I need the hometown. I need where you went to college. I need your undergrad major. All right. So uh, a little bit about me. I was born and raised in a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, called Gehan, Ohio. Uh, that's one G, an A and H, two N's and an A. Uh, I uh, grew up there, student athlete, um, played every sport underneath the sun, literally. Uh, left Gahanna, went to South Carolina State University on a volleyball scholarship, little uh, small HBCU down in Orangeburg, South Carolina. Uh, after South Carolina State, I actually left, came back to Columbus and did an internship at the Ohio State University in their athletic department. Spent two years there until I was strongly convinced to go to the best sports ad program in the country, Ohio University, uh, which I graduated from there. Uh, from there, I landed a really cool job in Chicago with uh, an alum at an agency. Spent a year there and then was recruited to go to the Cleveland Browns to oversee social and digital media. Uh, from there, I came down here to Florida for the PGA Tour and here I am. Nice. Awesome story. So you said you played, you played every sport under the sun and you obviously yeah. selected volleyball. So two part question. Yeah. Why, why did you select volleyball and what other sport, if you could have played, would you have played? Oh man. So I'm going to, I'm going to say three sports. Okay. Had three. I my first sport growing up was actually soccer. I played soccer from the age of four up until my freshman year of high school. Um, I played basketball for the same amount of time. So those were my original two sports. I started playing volleyball in middle school, about seventh grade, I think. I went out for the team because I was I hit my growth spurt early. So I've I've been five <laughs> eight since I was like. 12. <laughs> so they, everybody got really excited about me and put me on the volleyball court. I was like, sure, why not? Uh, my father is a coach, so hence why I played everything. But um, got to college and, or excuse me, got to high school and I was a little cocky growing up, uh, if you can guess. And uh, the high school varsity soccer coach actually wanted me to sit the bench for a year behind a senior because she still hadn't gotten her scholarship yet. Right? Yeah, doing that. Yet, and as you know, a fourteen-year-old going into high school, I'm like, I haven't sit the bench my entire life. Uh, I was like number two goalie in the state, and she was not, so it didn't make sense <laughs> to me. So I was like, forget this. I'm gonna go play volleyball. So I went and actually quit soccer. Uh, going into high school, uh, went to play volleyball, um, where I did, you know, four years on varsity there, and then uh, played basketball with that until I actually had a club coach tell me I'll never play Division One volleyball outside of the MAC conference. And I said, oh, boy, I'm going to show you. Uh, and so on that day, I stopped playing basketball and actually focused on volleyball for full time just to prove the naysayers wrong. Um, it, it was a, it was probably when I look back on it, it was a tough decision that I made probably a little too easily. Um, I was supposed I was supposed to go to back to school to play basketball. That was like my that was my sport. Volleyball was second, but somebody told me I couldn't do it, and I said, "Well, guess I'm about to do it." So there's a theme here, naysayers, stay yeah. away from Laura Waters Brown. 
Yes, never tell me I can't do something. I will do it. <laughs> um, all right, well, you're doing a great job on the speaker series thus far. So we're gonna shift gears. So we kind of basically build out the program into four quarters um, and each quarter focus on this different aspect of your career pathway. Before we do that, a couple warm up questions to get you comfortable. Yeah. Favorite sport to watch? Ooh, favorite sport to watch, women's soccer. Favorite sport to play currently? Basketball. Uh, you're from Columbus. Mm -hmm. favorite, favorite Buckeye of all time? Leo Brown, my uncle. He Love was that. the first black football captain at The Ohio State University. That is amazing. Um, favorite book? My favorite book is a book by Shonda Rhimes called The Year of the Yes. Nice. And then favorite social media platform. I know that you you work around digital and social. So what, what's your favorite platform for you individually, personally? Yeah, my favorite social platform is actually Instagram. It's huh. easy. It's quick. No one knows if I'm looking at their stuff. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you want on the social media platform. Basically, it's there. It's perfect. All right. So warm ups are done. First quarter. Sounds like you came from a sports background from a family standpoint with an uncle and your dad was a coach, but yeah, maybe, maybe help us understand um, maybe the most more memorable experience that you had in relation to sports as you're growing up, going back to like grade school, high school, what do you, what really comes to mind when you think of your relationship with sports? Yeah, I actually don't know life without sports. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember a time that I didn't have sports. Um, there was a, uh, there's actually a photo of me in my Easter dress when I'm like four shooting baskets. <laughs> um, so I've never known life without sports. So I would say the most memorable moment uh, for me was my first major injury, actually. Ooh. Uh, I was in high, I was in um, middle school, middle school, I was playing select soccer and they pulled me out to go score some points. Because again, quick, quick spurts, I got you all day. <laughs> Anything over that, I'm out. That's why I was a goalie. Um, but I actually buckled my knee, uh, misstepped, buckled my knee, squad came out. It was a whole oh, thing. No. Uh, ambulance, went to the hospital. Uh, my mom had to leave work, uh, came down. It was, it was wild. But that's actually the most memorable. <laughs> Cassidy wins, uh, you know, six packs, anything like that. That's probably the most memorable for me. Definitely not the typical answer for this speaker yeah. series. Yeah. But well, we yeah. appreciate that. <laughs> Sometimes pain is memory. I mean, technically, that's you can answer the question appropriately. Most certainly, man. Absolutely. Was there was there a specific athlete or team that like was like that drove your fandom when you were younger? A lot of our students are just big time sports fans because of a person or team. Who who was that for you? Yeah. Um, I never actually had athletes that made me a fan again. My, my dad, my uncles, everybody around me played sports. So it was just kind of a way of life. But there was a time when I wanted to be Mia Hamm. Uh, mm -hmm. And so uh, that, that, that whole team, that whole era of soccer uh, really got me starting to think about what I wanted to do in college. Like I always knew I wanted to play sports in college. Um, and Mia, I was going to go to UNC be Mia Hamm, the goalie version, and the one <laughs> for the Olympics. I love how you're like going to be here but playing a totally different position. Mm -hmm. Yep, pretty much. And a little taller. I'm a little taller than her. Yeah. Um, all right. So great job on the early years. Moving on to kind of what we call our second quarter. So focusing on growing up. So going back and putting yourself in the shoes of our students, which are high school students, mm -hmm. what were you going to be when you grew up? Uh, when I was in high school, um, I actually wanted to go into medicine. Me. I was gonna, yeah, I was going to be a, because of my first memorable moment, which was my knee and then subsequent injuries after that. Who was the first person I was It was the orthopedic doctor, yeah. sports med. So I wanted to go to college and become a sports med doctor. So you knew you wanted to be around sports and you're like, they helped me out. Doctors make a lot of money. Figure it out, right? Might as well. I didn't, I didn't, uh, eek when they brought out the uh dissecting oh. animals so oh. um so along those lines you go off to college at south carolina state mm -hmm. were you pre-med i don't remember hearing that as part of your your intro yeah. not a lot of people know that about me <laughs> so i Please. went to school pre-med major okay. uh, i went in and uh started classes was you know doing well 
I'd always excel, excelled at uh, academics because in addition to being a coach, my father was a teacher. How convenient. Oh, wow. He conveniently taught at my high school. Oh, cool. Real fun. Um, <laughs> but pre-med, I got into it and I actually look back sometimes and regret it because I met my first real obstacle. Uh, so I had a chemistry teacher, chemistry class, and I got a B in it. It was my first B ever. And I was like, I studied so hard. I did everything I could and I got a B. This clearly is not the track for me because I can't be great at it. Uh, <laughs> and so I changed my major and I became uh, biology education because I was like, I'm still gonna be in sports again. Uh, I'm gonna coach. So I'll become huh. a teacher and I'll coach. Uh, I took my practicum and started working with some really young, younger students uh, on our campus. Uh, quickly found out that was not for me because uh, <laughs> that didn't work. Um, changed my major again uh, to business administration, I think. General business administration, totally not sports, totally not me. Had to wear a suit like once a week to school that I, I adamantly did not want to do and was I basically was on strike every week. I had a suit, it was balled up in my book bag. I never put it out, didn't iron it at all. I was like, I'm gonna show up bare minimum. Um, but found out quickly for me after all of the economic lectures and um, the, the, the business and the accounting, people that came and talked to us found out that wasn't for me either. Uh, and so I ended up in marketing. Um, wow. Which and I all, ended up- All this is in four years? Yes. That's a lot. Four, four majors in four years. Four majors, four years, because my scholarship covered four years. Four years. <laughs> so I ended up graduating with a degree in marketing. This is marketing, yeah. Good for you. I mean, and those are kind of like, I mean, the business and marketing are similar, but to be able to jump from pre-med to biology and all those other majors and get done in four years, you must have you must have really been hustling. Oh, I was moving. I was moving. I was actually, at one point, once I went to the business school, they said I could graduate with a minor in um, biology. And I was like, okay, that could be cool. Like that'll look good on resumes, right? Like, you know, minor in biology, science. But what they forgot to tell me were the specific courses that I needed to take. So I have, in addition to my, my undergraduate marketing degree, an additional 18 credit hours Oof. of biology classes. I think I went all the way through physics too. Well, when we host speaker series around biology, can can you be our host? <laughs> I'll put that out there. Uh, that I put that dark time behind me. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of moving on, we're at halftime, two quarters down. Nice. Third, third quarter ready to roll. So we're talking life post education. So you've gone from being a student as a full time job to having a a full time job. So. What was your pathway into your first job? Was there someone that helped you and, and how did you land that first role? Yeah, so my first job um, after undergrad, I always worked growing up. I've had a job since I was 14, 13 or 14. Um, but my first official job coming out of undergrad was at The Ohio State University as a full-time intern. And I got that because of a family friend who happens to be Gene Smith, who mm -hmm. happens to be the AD of the Ohio State University Athletics Department. Uh, he actually put me in touch with another Ohio U alum, Diana Sabo, uh, who hired me on as a fan experience and promotions intern. Um, I quickly found out that uh, I was gonna have to do some more hustling. So I had <laughs> at any one time six additional jobs oh. while interning uh, because I also thought I was grown and wanted to live on my own. Were you getting paid as an intern? I was. I was getting. I was not enough. All that. Yeah, I was getting yeah. a check uh, once a month, um, but it was. It was. I learned so much. I, I like. I learned so so much from that job. That um, just life lessons, business lessons. Um, how to do my job for one, but I wouldn't change that ever. And then that's what an internship is for, right? It's, it's to give you a good sense of what you like doing, and then and figure out if that's what you want to do for your remainder of your career. Yeah. And you get to do a lot of things um, for, for, for a lot of different things for a lot of different departments and organizations because everybody wants to give the intern things to do. So 
literally was the foundation of my sports career was that internship because I learned every side of how to put on an event, to how to market, to sponsorship, to activation, the whole deal. Um, so very fortunate to have been able to secure that. Awesome. Was it, has there ever been a, whether it's at Ohio State or even in some of your past recent jobs, and oh my gosh, I work in sports moment where like, this is like amazing. I get, I get paid to do this. Yeah. So it was actually one of my side hustles. Okay. Uh, I also worked, uh, did game day experience for Ohio high school athletic association. Yeah. So especially my internship, but for Ohio high school athletic association. Um, and we had the boys and girls state championships. And because of my experience at Ohio State during game days, I knew the video crew that was being um, uh, or being used to film and to produce the event. And so I was able to actually institute the use of the video boards during the state championships. Oh, and wow. so now when you go to state championships at the shot um, or value to the arena, you'll see highlights you'll see um, a halftime recap video because those are all videos that we put together for the college uh, students uh, for Very their cool. basketball games. And so that for me um, as a former athlete, like to be able to see um, the high school students come off the bench and I will never forget to black and yellow because I love the beat. And so they came off and, you know, I was cueing the announcer to say their names, the spots picked them up, dropped them off. It was a whole thing and you can definitely feel the energy and being able to provide that experience for these people who young people who may never play the sport that they love again it was dope super dope that's awesome well that's awesome it's funny that book that came from an internship, internship experience i'm sure you've been around famous people since then but like that's the most memorable aspect of your career so that's awesome mm -hmm. all right fourth quarter yeah monday morning quarterback so you're not in high school but you used to be in high school Mm -hmm. You've got this great career working for the PGA Tour. You've had some other stops. What do you wish you would have known about your career path or working in sports then that you now know? That's a good question. That's the age old question. What, what would I tell my younger self? What do I wish I would have known? I wish I would have known earlier about the digital space and following um, non-traditional areas of marketing. I've always been open to it, but I wasn't introduced to this to digital until graduate school. So I wish I would have been more involved earlier in web mm -hmm. development, whether it's coding or graphic design, things like that. I wish I would have done that. Yeah, so I guess as a follow-up to that, because that's that's a lot of your background now, mm -hmm. a lot of our high school students are savvy like that, but they might not use social digital media for mm -hmm. productive purposes, but any specific pieces of advice that they can utilize for digital and social now, as they start to think about their career, like how can they start to acquire some of those skills or what can they do with that? Yeah, YouTube. I learned my <laughs> job at, I learned how to do digital things on YouTube. Uh, I learned how to code, how to build a website on YouTube. Uh, wow. I learned how to use Photoshop on YouTube uh, while I'm at a job. Uh, like my boss came to me and was, and was like, we need to update this website. <laughs> okay. Why? Why uh, you come to me? <laughs> right. Like I don't. I, I don't. I'm looking around. Like who are you talking to? So learning to do that on YouTube. So I would say YouTube. Um, I would also say while you're scrolling through the Twitters and the TikToks and the Facebooks, if you use Facebook, I don't know if high schoolers actually use Facebook um, and the Instagram, but look at your favorite brands and see what they're doing and try to replicate it. Um, if you can figure out how to make a carbon copy of it in the process, you're going to learn how to do different techniques and tools. Um, but to also just study and value your crafts, everything is on the internet and you can literally find a how to's for everything. Um, the one tool I always tell people to use is uh, Facebook blueprint. Uh, it is a, uh, online learning program that Facebook puts together and it literally walks you through how to use Facebook, how to make money on Facebook and the tools that you learn there will overlay into the other digital spaces of the world, the social medias. If you can get the, the, the baseline knowledge there, that'll start you to 
go and be able to Google, you know, how do I build this? How does an ad do this? How do, how do I look for this certain color? What types of colors work? So Facebook blueprint, YouTube. Awesome. Love it. It's about that time. We're almost done here. Okay. Hail, Hail Mary. You've got one last chance to give these kids some advice. Yeah. Get them, get them in the shape. What is Laura Waters Brown telling them? If I could tell young high school students anything as they go into this big, scary world, one, oh, is I can only have one thing? You can say more than one, it's okay. Okay, can I, okay. I'm gonna say number one, don't be so quick to grow up because bills are real. <laughs> uh, number two, don't listen to the naysayers. Uh, and number three, don't get caught up in the hype or the chase for money. Do what makes you happy. Find that. And it's cliche. They'll say you never will work a day in your life, but it's it's completely true. You need to find what makes you happy and what makes you want to get up every morning and be a productive citizen. And just think about this world once we're done with it. What are people going to say about you? What legacy are you going to leave behind? That's heavy. That's a lot for high school. That was good, that was good though. You hit them with three. You were very distinct. They were good. They were great. Thank you so much. Thank you to Ortho Carolina uh, for your support. And thank you to Laura Waters Brown. You crushed it. Appreciate you. Thank you. Bye.